Every day, you and I get bombarded with negative news. And just like our bodies becomes what we eat, our minds become the information that we consume. If you want to stay positive, it's so important that you also listen to stories that inspires you and uplifts you. In this podcast, we interview world-leading experts dedicated to solving the world's most pressing problems. And if you stick around, I promise you will not only be as informed as if you watch the news, you will feel uplifted, inspired, and have more positive energy in your life. Welcome to Great.com Talks with... Hi and welcome. Today, Great.com Talks with Annalisa Kulakowski, who is the board president of CampQualityUSA.org. And if you haven't heard of Camp Quality USA before, they serve children with cancer and their families by providing year-round programs and experiences for no cost. And if you're new here into this podcast, you definitely want to press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app, because today we're going to talk about how we can make life better for children that has cancer. Annalisa, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with Great today. No problem. Thank you. So uh, how would you, I made a short introduction now, but how would you describe camp quality to someone that is not familiar with the work that you do? Sure. Um, you know, camp quality becomes a big family um, for these children and for their families. Um, like you said, it's a, a summer camp for children with cancer and their families. We also do other events throughout the year that get them together as often as we can. Um, with COVID, obviously things have been a little bit more difficult, but um, it's really about giving them a support network um, to be together, um, time to be together either as, as um, children that have cancer or even siblings. Um, and parents, giving them all opportunities to, to be together and um, become a big family and bond. I can imagine how important that is because I guess it can be confusing and alienating. You know, maybe you're in a regular class in school and then you get this diagnosis and then all of a sudden you're a bit maybe different from the other children. I, I don't know. So what is the challenges these kids are going through and why is that community feeling so important? Yeah, absolutely. There's, you know, there's a lot of change, a lot of differences, um, you know, for, for the children um, that are diagnosed, they, like you said, might lose their hair, they might start getting uh, made fun of or even bullied. And at Camp Quality, one of the really nice things that we like to see is that it's very inclusive. The children are very accepting um, of each other. We might have a child that was diagnosed lost their hair and is wearing a wig, um, for instance, at school, but they get to camp and after a day or two, they might even take it off um, because it's just so comfortable for them. Um, everybody that is there has experienced um, what they've experienced. They don't have to explain it. Um, you know, some of the kids might want to talk about their diagnosis, some don't, um, but they all know that they're in a safe place, um, safe space and, um, other people have experienced what they're going through. Um, we've, we've, we've found that that's very key to their comfort. Yeah, I can definitely imagine that. And also having the experience that um, they're not alone. And I guess right. also for the parents, it must be helpful to be able to interact with uh, other parents that are going through similar challenges because yeah, the whole family is involved, I guess. Right, yeah, for the families, um, especially the parents, um, we take children that are in various stages of their diagnosis. So we have some that have been recently diagnosed, everything's new, um, incredibly scary. Um, you have children that have, have been um, diagnosed and they're in the middle of their, their cancer fight. Um, and you have some that are in remission. And so with that wide range of, of experiences and exposures, you know, the families can can share what they've been through or how they overcome um, struggles and, and listening to them lean on each other and, and get through it together is, is really, really inspiring. Yeah, I can imagine the importance of that community feeling. So for someone that is listening that is not so aware of how big the problem is, um, yeah, how big is the problem with uh, child cancer? 
Yeah, there's there's um, many children that are diagnosed every year. Um, you know, camp quality is is one summer camp. There's a lot of different um, cancer opportunities that are out there for for diagnosed children. One of the things that that we really pride ourselves on is that connection um, and and the inclusion. And even if a child um, you know might have a prosthesis, um, we will find ways for them to get involved in all of the programs that we have. There are no limitations. Um, society puts limitations on people. And uh, we've, we've found that if, if we um, get them all engaged, the children remove those limitations um, and, and can do whatever they want to do. So, um, you know, there's thousands of children that, that get diagnosed, but um, all of the ones that we come in contact with, we, we try to just brighten their day and, and help them do what they were, were meant to do as children. So tell me a bit more then about the, the camp. Like what happens? What is the experience the kids are going through when they visit? Sure. Um, so we have 19 different um, summer camp opportunities, plus um, all of the weekend, you know, family, teen and, and sibling weekends on top of that. But the summer camp is really a, a traditional summer camp. Um, we have crafts, we have um, activities, there's there's swimming and um, zip line and, and all kinds of what you would consider regular activities. And, you know, making sure that all of the kids that are attending can, can experience all of those activities. They, they typically try new things that they've never done before. Um, you know, maybe if, uh, you know, we have medical, medical staff on hand, so everybody is taken really good care of um, and we make sure that they're all um, safe. Um, but they get to experience things that that a normal kid would get to experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really nice. So what kind of challenges are you facing uh, as an organization? Um, yeah, what kind of challenges are you facing? Sure. Um, you know, right now with COVID, that's obviously a challenge um, that everybody is having um, to adapt to. Um, so even um, getting one of the things we used to pride ourselves on is getting all of our families together as often as possible. So we've had to come up with with new ways of keeping our families connected, because, again, we believe that that relationship and getting them together is is really key. Um, and so um, developing new programs as as times change, um, we have to evolve too. So finding new programs and new ways for them to connect and still have that that family feeling, still have um, the experiences that they would have at camp. This past summer, uh, we came up with a program that uh, basically camp in a box, um, we called it camp in, um, provided all of the, the crafting activities and the creative activities that you would normally do at camp and um, they could do them either individually, they could do them as a family. Um, and we had lots of ways for them to, to interact and, and share and show those. We even had a number of camps that did um, virtual talent shows and, and all kinds of things. So it was really great to see. Nice. Yeah, COVID is certainly encouraging creativity when there yeah. has been certain limitations uh, imposed. So can you see that the experience you have had now during COVID, that that is something you will take with you. Maybe there's opportunities for, you know, more frequent meetings or to connect quicker. What have you learned from the pandemic? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think the biggest thing that we learned is a way to take camp into the hospitals. Um, one of the things that, you know, we've always done is we've tried to reach out to the local hospitals and build a relationship there and, and, and find kids that can attend our camp, but there's always kids that um, are too sick. They, they can't leave a hospital setting or they can't leave um, you know, their home, home medical setting to come to camp. They're not healthy enough. And um, with COVID, it has become very apparent we can take camp to them. Um, and so those are experiences that we're planning to continue um, long after we see COVID go away, finding ways to, to really pull in even more families that, that really do need that connection and, and need other, other parents and other children and, and just the experiences to get away from the cancer diagnosis. Mm. So is there something you think the uh, 
average uh, person, the average listener is unaware of when it comes to uh, children with cancer that you would like for them to know? Um, they just want to be normal. Um, I, think, I think the stigma that we often put on anybody that's um, sick is that they're sick and that they need distance and um, you know anybody going through any kind of medical situation, they, they still need the connection, they still need love. And there's, there's many, many ways you can connect. Um, you don't have to take a week of vacation to show up at the camp. There's um, other, other ways that you can connect to the camp and provide the support that we need um, to be able to provide those services. So, you know, there's fundraising events people can get involved with. Um, word of mouth is, is a huge thing for us just sharing about our organization, um, whether it's to families that are in need that could benefit from our services or just from other volunteers that could get involved with um, either the camp or one of our weekend events or even a fundraising activity. Mm. So you have been running these camps for 14 years, which is uh, impressive. And I'm curious, what have you, both what have you learned, but also how has the camps kind of changed and progressed over that time? Yeah, um, I've actually been involved with for 30 years. Um, I just 30? Ran the tech Ooh, yeah. Underestimated. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I just ran the Texas camp for, for 14 uh, years, okay. but um, the kids can do anything. Um, you know, I was a teenager myself when I started volunteering. And um, one of the unique things about our organization is we pair all of the children up one-on-one -on -one with an adult volunteer. And um, it really creates a nice bond um, for those kids. We can give them extra encouragement um, to do things that they've never done before. But as a volunteer, we really learn from these kids what's possible. Um, because, you know, like I said earlier, we're the ones that put limits. Um, and, and children teach us all the time that they just, they don't have limits and they really can do anything. And I think that's something that we've seen in our program just grow and grow is, is um, just that support that they can do anything that they want to do. Yeah, I, it's so fun to watch kids. There is just, there are not those filters yet. It's very that's enjoyable. Right. It's very enjoyable. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> so moving forward then, what would you like if, what kind of changes would you like to see um, both in the camps, but maybe for children that has cancer overall? Um, I would like us to keep up with their needs. Um, you know, something that I've seen since I've been involved is we went from our training would talk a lot about what to do when the children pass away, um, because a long time ago, we were losing many more children than we do today. Um, and what that's caused is now there's more children that are surviving, but they're surviving with, with consequences, right? They went through incredibly harsh treatments um, and, and now they're having to live with those. And so we've seen a lot of, of our new programs start talking about um, psychosocial needs and how to support them as they get into teens. And um, I would really like to see us evolve into some adult programs even. Um, and just follow what the needs of, of our, our kids are and, and provide them more services to, to be the best they can be. Yeah, I can see how important that must be. Because yeah, this must be so much both physical and psychological stress. Right. And we didn't have that before when they weren't making it. So um, we're, you know, the the technology has come a long way. Um, cancer treatment for children is still very behind um, adult treatment. So a lot of a lot of the children treatments are really intended for adults. And so it's incredibly harsh on, you know, their little bodies. But um, the more and more cancers that they do beat, um, you know, they've gone through some harsh treatments. So just keeping up with what their um, mental and physical needs might be coming up with new programs to be able to support them would be would be great for us mm. so like child cancer is one of those things that it's maybe one of the more emotional causes to to hear about so someone for listening to this might feel 
maybe even a little bit um, power powerless to get involved because it's so emotionally intense. So what would you say to someone that maybe wants to get involved and help, but uh, either feels hesitations or don't really know what to do? Sure. I, you know, I've had that conversation with people a lot. Um, because you you can't work with me um, in my day job without hearing about camp quality, and I've I've recruited a lot of people that I've worked with, and and a lot of people are afraid. Um, they think that it'll be sad or um, that they'll be crying all the time, and and the reality is, um, watching and helping these kids bloom and and do anything that they can do is a very exciting and and fun thing to do. There's definitely sad times um, when our kids are going through some harsh treatments, or we might. Um, um, lose some. Um, those are definitely hard times, but in general, the time with Camp Quality and the time with these families is incredibly fun and incredibly rewarding. Um, and, you know, if, if, if you are too sensitive, um, then maybe helping us on, on the sidelines is, is the right thing um, for you, but it's, it's really a, a fun place. Um, and that's, once they try it out, they do see that um, the sadness they, they thought might be there you know, really is taken over with a lot of, a lot of smiles and it's worth it. Hmm. Yeah. I think you turned that around uh, real well. <laughs> I can see it in your energy that, yeah, even though it's hard, there are moments that makes it worth it. So yes. for the person on the sideline then, or maybe on the other side of the Atlantic in Europe that wants to help you guys out in some way, uh, what can they do? Um, I would say, you know, look for, um, you can look for a camp quality near you. Um, we're always looking for donations to be able to provide um, all of these um, activities that we do, because like I said, everything is free to the families. It's also free to our volunteers. And so um, with our one-on-one -on -one program, we need a lot of volunteers. Um, so word of mouth is obviously very huge, whether it's to get more volunteers to find new campers and, and families for us. Um, you can sign up for monthly donations just to keep a recurring um, income coming in to help us with our programs. And then, you know, if you're ready for hands on stuff, you can get involved with um, some of our, our fundraising events and um, even come to camp if you want to. Beautiful. I can imagine that being a, yeah, a transformative experience for the volunteer as well. Annalie, we're coming towards the end of the interview. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. Thank you. And for you listening, if you enjoyed this interview, press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app, because that shows the algorithms that this conversation is important and it increases the chance that more people can hear it and get inspired themselves to take positive actions to help children with cancer. Thank you so much for listening and we we'll see you in the next episode.